that when a person sets out on a long journey, somewhere along the way they get lost or deviated in another direction. So, in our spiritual life, from where we are now, today, to where we want to arrive, our destination is very far. This journey is not like other journeys you have undertaken. Maybe you have been on a journey to India or Australia and you have to fly three times for 30 hours. Now, this journey may take some lifetimes. So it's very important not to get lost on the way. In this regard, for our practical guidance, that we never lose the plot, that we don't forget exactly where we are going. Three poems are extremely important. If an offenseless person will practice bhakti, in accordance with these three poems, then they will always be on track, on target. What are they? First of all, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Shikshastaka, which describes the mood in which one should chant the holy name. So that Shuddha Nam will come, with a relationship to Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan. Then, the next uh, short work of only 11 verses is Sri Upadesh Amrita. Then, Srila Prabhupada has published it as the Nectar of Instruction by Srila Rupa Goswami. Actually, this Nectar of instruction was given by Mahaprabhu to Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami wrote it down. So it's not directly composed by him, but the teachings were given and he has put it together in 11 verses. Rupa Goswami has presented it in that way. And then, Sri Manashiksha. Only 12 verses plus a falsuruti. glorifying the result of remembering these verses every day, chanting them every day. So that is Manashiksha of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, instructions to the mind. So you should always study these three texts, remember the verses of these texts, and check whether or not your life <coughs> is the embodiment of these three texts. And if your life is something else, then you are going somewhere else and you have wandered off the path. <laughs> Understand? So, today, I want to uh, briefly look at uh, these practical verses of Sri Rupa Goswami's Upadesh Amrita. First of all, he's saying, Pacho Vegam, Manasakruda Vegam, Jiva Vegam Udarapasta Vegam Etan Vegam Yovishaheta Dhira Sarvam Apimam Prativim Sasisyat One who can tolerate six Vegas Veg means urge, push Our mind and senses are pushing us to do something other than bhajan. So how can you stay on the path of bhajan? You have to be able to tolerate the pushes of the mind and senses in another direction. So, 
He's saying, one who ha can tolerate these six urges, he is qualified to make the whole world, everyone in the world can become his sister, his disciple. Why? Because one who has not controlled his senses and fully engaged them in bhakti cannot teach others how to control their senses and engage in bhakti. Apinina kaila dharma sikanana yai eto siddhanta gita bhagavata gai Unless one is practicing then his instructions to others will not have power. There was a uh, one lady and her son was eating too many sweets. So she uh, took him to the local Brahmin, like a guru of the village, and said, please tell my son not to eat sweets. Then the Brahmin, he said, come back next week. One week later she came back with her son, and then the Brahmin told him, don't eat sweets. Then the mother said, why didn't you tell that last week? Why did you make us wait for a whole week? He said, well, last week I myself was eating sweets. <laughs> so if I don't tell him, <laughs> don't eat sweets, then my words will not have any power. So, if one is not practicing himself, he has no right to instruct others. If he will instruct others, they cannot follow anything. Because in sound, there are four levels. Not only the part that you can hear Vaikari, but also the uh, para, pasyanti and madhyama. On the level of the pran, manas, mind and buddhi. So if your mouth is saying, don't eat sweets, but your mind is saying, oh, I like chocolate. Ragusa. <laughs> Swiss chocolate. <laughs> Then, this vibration says one thing, but the other vibration coming on the level of the mind and the intelligence, the pran, is giving another message to that person. And they'll follow that message, not the outer message. Understand? So, Srila Bhakti Notaku, he said, one can mm, understand something about the greatness of a Vaishnava by how many people He's inspiring in, in bhakti. Because if a person has no shower, shakti, then Kali Kaler Dharma Krishna Nama Sankirtan, Krishna Shakti Vina Nahi Tara Pravartan. In this age of Kali, the Yuga Dharma is Nama Sankirtan. Unless one has Krishna Shakti, then he cannot make everyone sing and dance. So, one who has control over their mind and senses and they are fully engaged in Krishna's service. And actually really that's the only way to control the mind and senses. Those who try to control their mind and senses without being engaged in Krishna's service, oh, their detachment, their renunciation is false, artificial. And they'll very soon again become attached. Their dormant samskaras will become activated again and they'll engage in worldly life. So, sarvam apimam prativim sasisyat One who's controlled and engaged in this Krishna service can, can give sisya, make the whole world his sisya. That means they can be under his guidance and discipline. Now, what are the six urges that must be tolerated? First of all, vajo vega. The urge to speak. Because as we mentioned, sound is not only what you hear. But before that sound even comes from your mouth, it passes through, uh, it begins as a movement of pran, and that pran goes through your mind and intelligence, and it uh, makes waves there. As the, and as the idea begins to turn into the, its linguistic symbols, before being produced as sound, going through the subtle body, so every time you speak, even before you speak, you've already made a wave in your chitta. So, if you want to go into samadhi trance, 
Krishna would, will not be re realized in your ordinary state. Krishna will be realized when the mind is in, there is a spirit of steady consciousness. In, in Samadhi, in all the stages before Samadhi, the stages before, in our Bhakti Samadhi, that is a very high stage. But realization will come and then before that, in the stages of Smaran, Dharan, Dhyan, Dhruv, Anusmriti, in our Bhakti practice. But those stages correspond to the Sampragyata Samadhi in the yoga system. So it's also a, um, a preliminary state of trance from the yogic point of view. So realization will only come when the mind is very steady. So if you will speak material things, then the mind will be filled with the waves of material thoughts. And then there's no question of realization. And if there's no realization, there's no taste. You cannot relish some food that you are not tasting. If you don't experience, if you don't have anubhav, the experience of the food, how will you taste it? So tasting bhakti comes from anubhav, realization. There's no realization. Then there's no real taste. Of course, from the very beginning of bhakti, there's a little a bath of taste. Otherwise, we would not be undergoing so many difficulties to strive to make progress in bhakti. For many, it's a little taste. But it is not a shuddha ruchi. It's not a pure taste. So, it's very important. Don't make your mind, which you're trying to become, uh, uh, make steady, turbulent by speaking about anything other than Krishna. So this is the first benefit of not speaking about anything other than Krishna. Mind will become steady. And if you are positively speaking, not only being silent, not speaking about things other than Krishna, but actually speaking about Krishna, then this vibration is at first the abhas of the transcendental energy and later it will become the aprakrita pran, movement of supernatural pran, Krishna's internal potency will take over the mind. So the mind should be steady, but if it moves, it should be moved by Krishna's spiritual potency. And that will come about by gradually only engaging the tongue in speaking about Krishna and chanting the name of Krishna and not speaking about worldly things which are the products of Tamagun, Rajagun or even Satvagun. Hmm? So this is one of the advantages of Vacho Vega, tolerating the urge to speak. <coughs> Another advantage is that what will usually happen is you can keep a notebook if you like. And any every time you say something which is not about Krishna, you can keep two columns. One column is you will say something glorifying yourself, directly or indirectly. Or the second column is you say something criticizing others. And both of them are very bad. Uh, because that's the nature of the mundane talk. The person speaks about himself or his family, his house, his country. Hmm? But it's all about him. He's in the center. Hmm? Or it's all oh, this person is so bad. This is so bad. And if we if we uh, criticize, minimize someone hmm, who is uh, a vice, a, a devotee, then it will not be only a sin. To criticize people is a sin. Ordinary people, but to criticize a Vaishnava is an apparat, an offense. And that will make obstacles on the path of spiritual life. So we can progress, but if we make offenses, we will not progress. So first thing, first thing, Vajo Veda. Control the urge to speak. Only speak Krishna Nam and Krishna Kata. The glories of Hari, Guru and Vaishnavas. Bhagavad Bhakti Vardhana, Sutta Goswami Pad. Sukhadev Goswami Pad is saying that Yad Bhagavata Mahatmyam Bhagavad Bhakti Vardhana When we speak the glories of pure Vaishnavas like our Acharyas 
Our Guru Parampara and the associates of Mahaprabhu, then that nourishes our own devotion. So first, Vato Vega. If the tongue can be controlled, it's easy to control all the other things. If you can just focus on this one, then the others will follow naturally. Vato Vega, Manasa Kroda Vega. Here, Manasa means the urge of the mind. Mind wants to speculate. So, yesterday we discussed all the speculations that the mind does. Brahm, Pramada, Vipralipsa. All the misconceptions. So, actually when we speak mundane things, then we're actually compounding these misconceptions again and again. They're becoming stronger and stronger in our mind. Because the mundane talk is related to this. It, it is all based on the Aikya Buddhi Alamban Rup individual objects, Pritak Darsha, seeing things separately and independent from God. It is based on this. Swatantra Satta Tayaha, the multiplicity of independent existences. And Sadrsha Brahm, the permanence of things which are impermanent. So whenever you speak something mundane, it's always on the basis of these types of illusions. So we are compounding our illusion. And then, so if you don't control Vacho Veg, then Manasa Veg comes, mundane thoughts. And on the basis of that Brahm, that illusion, that Pramada, that inattentiveness, comes the Vipralipsa, the desire for gain. I, and we engage in uh, worldly karmas, fruitive activities, reward-seeking activities. We engage in jnana, some activities to become detached from the world, to just get liberation for ourselves, or yoga, to get some mystic power. These are the different wrong directions. So when the mind wants to go into these things, tolerate it. Don't allow the mind to go there. Manasa Krodha Begam. Krod means, if you have desires, which are not fulfilled in your mind, then that calm turns into growth. The desire turns into anger. <coughs> so if you're angry with someone, if you're angry with your friend or your husband or your wife, actually they are not the cause of your anger. The cause of your anger is your own unfulfilled desires. Because if your heart was Atmaram self-satisfied, when they do or say something stupid, <laughs> then you would not be angry. You would just laugh and very affectionately <laughs> encourage them to be corrected somehow or other. Or just tolerate. But you become angry. Why? No, it's not their fault. That's our own unfulfilled desire. And that anger is inside. And it's just waiting for an excuse to burst out. Okay, this person did something wrong. This is a good opportunity. <laughs> and then the anger comes out. Bhatu Begum, Manasakrota Begum, Jiva Begum. Jiva Begum, we're coming back to the tongue. This here, the first problem with the tongue is speaking. Can make so many problems. And the second one is the tongue is used for tasting worldly things. So that will also make problems. If you eat things which are not prepared by devotees and offered to Krishna, the mind will become polluted. If you take boga, if you take things which are not Mahaprasadam, then uh, the consciousness, both the consciousness will be present in that you are eating only sin and many material ideas and attachments will come in the mind. So, the tongue is very difficult to control. My Gurudev used to say that if, if someone is a vertebrate, you know, they have a spine, a backbone, you can catch them and control them. But it's very difficult to control something which has no bone. Because it can move around everywhere, you cannot catch it. So the tongue is like that, you can move around in every direction, there's no bone inside. So it's very difficult to control. And even though the tongue it seems so small, but the problems it makes are so big. In history, the biggest battles in history, what? Mahabharat Yudha. In the Mahabharat, this war, was the biggest battle. And the other biggest war was L 
about Ram's invasion of Lanka against Ravan. That was incomparable. Rama rather Rama Ravana Yo Yudam Ravan Ravana Yo Rama Ravana Yo Iva. It is said in Sahitya in in the Ramayan that you can say, Oh, this battle was huge, like an explosion, like a volcano. But with the battle between Ram and Ravan, you cannot give a comparison. Why? Rama Ravanayo Yudam Rama Rama Ravanayo Iva The battle between Ram and Rava was so ferocious, it was so huge that it can only be compared to itself. It's Anupam. So, these battles were very big, but what was the cause of these two battles? One day, Duryodhana, he came to the palace of Yudhisthira Maharaj. But that palace had been designed by Maya Dhanava, architect, a demonic architect. And he designed that palace with many optical illusions. So when Duryodhana came in the palace, he could not see where he thought it was a Water, he thought water was there, and he said, I have to walk through this water to get to that door. So he lifted up his dhoti, and he walked, and it was dry ground. But then when he came to a place where he thought it was dry ground, it was water, and he fell in the water with a splash. And all the kings and princes were there, and they saw him. They were laughing, but Draupadi saw him. And Draupadi said, oh, just see. The son of a blind man is also blind. <laughs> because he's the son of Dhritarashtra. Huh? So, if, if, a, if a woman makes an insult to a man with a male ego, oh. <laughs> so even though Krishna himself was the envoy to try to negotiate peace on behalf of the um, Pandavas, but Duryodhan was burning in his heart. He wanted war, he wanted war, he wanted revenge. Why? <laughs> the tongue. Lord Ram invaded Lanka. And there was a huge battle. Why? One day, Sitaram and Lakshman they were staying in the forest. And um, Marichi came in the form of a golden deer. It was a plan of Ravan to kidnap Sita. So, Lord Ram, he said, I'll go to catch this deer. But Lakshman, you stay here and you protect Sita. So then, Ram went and he shot that deer. And as the deer was dying, it was the demon Marichi. And he called out, imitating the voice of, of, of Lord Ramachandra. Oh, help, help. When Sita Devi heard this, said, Oh, Lakshman, go and help me. Help my Lord, he's in trouble. Lakshman said, He is Supreme Lord, he cannot be in any problem. This must be the trick of a demon. Then Sita Devi said, Oh, now I understand you. Because in Vedic times, if the older brother died, then his wife would become the wife of the younger brother. Yeah. So see today, no, you don't want to go to save him. Now I understand everything. <laughs> she implied this. And by these, these words were like arrow in the heart of Lakshman. And even though Lord Ram had told Lakshman, you should stay here, you should not leave. But Lakshman went against his better wishes because of the sharp words of Sita. And because of this, then Ravan came and kidnapped her, took her to Lanka, and it made the biggest war, bigger than the Mahabharata war. So, Vajo Vega, control your speaking. You will, it is like an arrow or a bullet. Once you fire it, you can't pull it back. 
Once you've spoken some words, you cannot retract them. And you may regret it, and it may be something that you regret for your whole life, or for many lifetimes even. So, first teaching, Vajo Vega, Manasakroda Vega, and Jiva Vega, only taste Mahaprasada. And also, don't taste like Anukut modes of every day. <laughs> Otherwise, you become very... Uh, agitated because here Jiva Vega, Uda or Pasta Vega. Uda means the belly. When you eat, when your tongue eats too much, the belly becomes packed full of food. Mm -hmm. And when you get conditioned, oh, I, I don't want to stop eating until I feel like I'm bursting. <laughs> and when you get that habit, then this heavy food and sensuous diet will push down on the genital, and then sex desire will come, uncontrollable. So it all begins with controlling the tongue. And then the other things which are very problematic, they'll become easier and easier until they go away. So Uttar Pastaveda, Eitanvega, Yogishayetatira, one who can control these, he can uh, give discipline to the whole world, guide them on the path of bhakti. So this is the first verse of Upadesha Amrita. Pay attention to this, check in your life every day if you're following it practically. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he used to, they used to bring him many preparations, but he would just say, oh, give me the boiled vegetable and the simple things, and then would distribute the sweets and other things too to the other Vaishnavas. So we have to make many preparations every day for Radha and Krishna. Very delicious preparations. But that doesn't mean that you have to personally respect all of them. <laughs> also you can make offense to Mahaprasada thinking, oh, uh, the uh, Rasagulas are transcendental. But the rice, not so much. <laughs> Why do you like this prasadam more than that prasadam? This is offense to prasadam. All prasadam is transcendental. Hmm? If you're seeing the duality in the in the prasadam, hmm? I like this, but I don't like this so much. Hmm? Then you are making offense because you're thinking only be perhaps in terms of your own gain. Hmm? Because of this, Sila Bhakti Stanswar Thakur, he used to. When the Mahaprasadam of the deities came out, then he would take it and mix it all together. The salty preparations, and pakoras, and uh, puris, salty preparations, and the sweet, sweet rice, and just mix it all together. And the devotee will say, I want you to have the sweet. Mix it all, and then I'll take Mahaprasadam. You don't have to do that, but he has done it only to teach us this lesson. Don't make offense to Mahaprasa. It is Krishna's Adharamrit, the nectar of Krishna's lips. In the purified state, our senses can experience that. So, now in the second verse of Upadesha Amrita, Sila Rupa Goswami Pari is saying, Atyahara Priyasascha Pajampunya Magarha Janasangas Taloyamcha Sarvi Bhakti Vinashati. Six things destroy your devotional service. So they have to be avoided. First one, Atyahara. Atyahara means overeating. But this overeating is not only the eating with the tongue. We eat through all five of our senses. You see, just like in the yoga system, withdrawing the senses from the external world is called the pratyahara. The ahara, the eating tendency of all the senses, senses is prati, that means reversed. And here, ati ahara, ati means atyanta, excessive. So, excessive eating with all of the senses. We eat through our eyes, just like Ajabel. One day he was in the forest collecting wood for a jagya and 
there he saw a drunken sutra, low class person, uh, enjoying uh, sense gratification, being lusty with a prostitute. So he ate it through his eyes. So if you eat something which is bad, it's poison, you become sick. So you can eat poison through your eyes. That's called television. <laughs> TV. Okay, in Bengal, there's no difference between V and B. So my Gurudev, you say TB. <laughs> Do you have TB? <laughs> Just as tuberculosis is, will make you sick. So TV will make you sick. Hmm? Taking poison through the eyes, associating with worldly things through the eyes, through the ears, listening to mundane things. And hmm, the sense of touch, the sense of smell. Hmm? We should accept those things which have been offered to Krishna. As Udavji has said, Toyopa Bhukta Sraganda Vasolang Krita Charjitaha Uchista Bhojino Dasas Tavamayam Jayenahi. Sila Udav is saying, Oh my Lord Krishna. Toyopa Bhukta Sraganda by accepting your Mahaprasad garlands by accepting the fragrant oils which have been offered to you hmm? by accepting cloth hmm? Mahaprasad cloth from the deities hmm? also Alankita by accepting the Mahaprasad ornaments from the deities hmm? on Radhastami in, in Mathura and on that day there used to be a very big festival. My Gurudev organized in four houses around Mathura. Big groups of devotees would uh, gather together. And they would have many, many presents for Radharani. So many bindis and kajal and bangles, nose rings, earrings, many presents. And carrying them uh, in baskets on their heads. And with big Sankirtan, four big Sankirtan bodies would come from different parts of the city and come to Kesha Jigoria Mart and then offer everything to Radharani on her birthday. And then when the festival was over, then all the Mahaprasad ornaments of Radharani, they were distributed. And then the bridge Basi ladies would decorate themselves with the bangles and earrings of Mahaprasad of Radharani. So Vasavankrita Chachita, by accepting the ornaments, the sandalwood paste, the chanda, which has been offered to Krishna, Uchista Bhog, you know, Dajas, and the Mahaprasada, the Bhog which has been offered to Krishna. By accepting all these things, would have said, Oh my Lord, Tavamayam Jayemahi will definitely cross over the ocean of material existence. So, all, everything which is Prasadi, which has been offered to Krishna, has transcendental power. So, don't let your senses be in contact with other things. Hmm? Only accept the things from. Uh, Krishna's, Krishna's Mahaprasad. When I uh, used to live in the uh, ashram of Srila Govinda Maharaj in Orissa, so the ashram had nearby a Goshala. So Brahmacharya had to go every day to bring the milk. So after some time, they had to bring lots of milk for the service of the deities. So uh, the temple president bought a motor scooter. And for the brahmachari who could go in and pick up the big churn full of milk and bring it for the deity service. So, uh, this was like, what, uh, 94. And uh, I was just uh, staying in India for the first time. I have been a few times, but I was moved to India at that time. So, so I was very amazed. They got this brand new motor scooter and they brought it to the temple. Uh, and then Srila Govind Maharaj came out and the Brahmacharis came and they had arti paraphernalia and they offered a garland and sandalwood paste and they offered arti <laughs> to the motor scooter. <laughs> Why? This is Krishna's motor scooter. <laughs> uh, don't take anything which is not Krishna's prasad. Uh, when I lived with my Gurudev in Mathura, then there was one devotee, he had to go 
work on the publication of books. So then, the uh, Silla Gurdjieff bought him a computer, and when the computer arrived, they took it out of the box, and then sandalwood based flowers, <laughs> arty, <laughs> offered to Krishna. <laughs> So you don't think like this. Don't take anything which is not Krishna's transcendental prasad and just use everything in his service. So, otherwise, if we we'll eat through any of our senses, our life can be ruined. So there's a very beautiful verse from the Garuda Purana. Kuranga matanga patanga varenga there are five sense objects. Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasaganda. Sound, the ob objects of touch, Form, the objects of the eyes, rasa, flavor, the object of the tongue, and ganda, fragrance, the object of the nose. So, there are five creatures whose lives are ruined by one of these sense objects. Kuranga, Matanga, Patanga, Bringa. Kuranga means a deer, Matanga means an elephant, Patanga means a moth. A bringa means a bee and a mina means a fish. So first of all, Kuranga is the deer. How does the hunter catch the deer? He goes into the forest. If he'll make a noise, the deer will hear it and run away. But if from a distance, he'll begin to play on a flute. Very beautiful music. Then the deer hears the sound of the music. He turns his head on one side oh. <laughs> and forgets about everything and that gives the chance for the hunter to get closer and then with his spear he can kill the deer. So the deer's life is ruined by uh, sound. He loses the intelligence due to the attachment to sound. Indriyanam icharatam yanmano nu vidhiyate tarasya harati pragyam navam nivambasi. It means, Indriyanam icharatam, your senses are wandering here and there. Yanmano nu vidhiyate, and the mind, if the mind becomes attached to any of the sense objects, then Tasya Harati Pragyam. Those sense objects is, will, will steal your intelligence. Vayur Ivam Navam Ivam Basi. Just like a boat on the water is blown away. If a boat has no uh, steering system, then it will just be blown wherever the storm is taking it. So in the same way, we are souls traveling through this world and instead of going to our goal, Goloka Vrindavan, we'll just be blown wherever our karma will take us. And why? Why do we not leave our karma and go to Krishna? Why are we carried away by karma? Because we lose our intelligence. Our intelligence is blown away by the mind focusing on a sense object. So, the first one is the deer. A deer, his life is destroyed by sound. Matanga, then the elephant. How does the hunter catch an elephant? He digs a deep pit and then covers it with grass. Then he takes a female elephant who is already in captivity and chains her to a tree nearby the pit. So then the male elephant in the wild sees the female elephant and he wants to touch her. So he approaches her, but then he falls through the grass into the hole and he cannot get out. So then the hunter leaves him there for some days. Because when he's uh, strong, it's very hard to control him. But if he'll leave him there for some days, he'll become weak. And then when he's become weak, he can go down in the hole, put the chains on 
and make a rap and then bring him out. So, the life of the elephant is destroyed by his mind and becoming attached to the sense of touch and his intelligence is lost. Blown away like a boat. Then, Kuranga Patanga, Patanga, Patanga means a moth. This is a common example everyone knows. If there's a candle of flame, then the moth goes, Woo! How beautiful! <laughs> I want to go there. And being attracted by the form of the flame, the moth flies into the flame and she's incinerated. So his life is ruined by form. Then, Brenda. Brenda means the bee, honeybee. The honeybee the smells the fragrance of the lotus flower. And he thinks, oh, how, there must be delicious nectar there. So, being attracted by the fragrance, he goes to the lotus flower. And then begins to drink the nectar. And he becomes so intoxicated, he forgets that uh, the evening is coming. And when the sun sets, the lotus will close. And then he cannot get out. Then when an elephant comes along and thinks, Oh, that lotus flower looks delicious. I want a snack. And the elephant pulls up the lotus flower and eats it. In the daytime, the bumblebee would have just flown away. But he cannot get out now and the life of the bumblebee is ruined. By attraction to fragrance. Then Mina, fish, tastes. The fish is swimming in the water and he sees one worm wriggling. Not on the top, not on the bottom, but halfway. <laughs> now worms cannot levitate halfway <laughs> in the water. But he's in, he, because he's so eager to taste, yeah, he cannot think that actually inside this worm is a hook. And the reason he's dangling halfway down is because he's on the end of a string and connected to a rod connected to a fisherman who's also hungry. Yeah. So then the fish, being blinded by his sense of taste, bites onto the hook and his life is ruined. Ends up on the plate of the fisherman, fried. So, here in the Garuda Purana it is said, Ekaha Pramadisha Katam Nahanyate Yasevate Panchave Eva Pancha. If each one of these five creatures, their life is ruined by one of their senses, then how will a person whose all five senses are out of control not be ruined? If all your five senses are out of control, what will happen? If your eye is attracted to some beautiful person, you want to touch them, you are listening to mundane things, eating mundane things, all the senses are out of control, then that person's life must be ruined. So, here in the second verse of Upadesha Amrita, Srila Rupa Goswami is saying, first, Atyahara, taking the worldly things through the senses or even taking the transcendental things but too much then this will spoil one's life also because it's an offense so Atyahara don't overeat with any of the senses Atyahara Prayasas now Prayas Prayas means over endeavoring Srila Rupa Goswami Pahit said that one of the angas of bhakti is to not do a very big aramba. That means to take on a very big project. If there's a great acharya, like Ramanuja acharya, Madhva acharya, like Srila Prabhupada, they can think, oh, I'm going to build a huge temple. No, I'll build a whole city. Because they have power. And they are actually sit there, they are already perfect. But if an ordinary sadhak will think, Oh, I will do a very big project. It will take all of his time. And he won't have time for chanting the holy names. 
You won't have time to study Shastra, to serve the deity, and do all the direct activities of Swarup Siddha Bhakti. You will do many activities of Arup Siddha Bhakti, collecting money for Krishna, construction and so many things. So if a person will have some, we can do some of these things, it's necessary in Guru Seva. But if we take on the very big project, it will take all of our time, we will not chant. And if on occasion you do chant, you sit and chant thinking about that project. You will not make any progress. So, so what if you make the big project? And then when you die, you take birth again. Because you were not absorbed in Radha Krishna's pastimes. Or following Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His example of Avesh being absorbed in the remembrance of Radha and Krishna. So you will take birth again. Everyone who was with you will also take birth again. And then afterwards it will be, someone will buy it and it will be turned into a supermarket or a cinema or something. <laughs> so, don't strive for temporary things that will uh, take over your life. We will have to do, take some projects and responsibility for Gurudev, but it's understood that along with that you have to do your sadhana. So, uh, prayas, over endeavoring, will ruin bhakti. Then, achahara prayas is prajalpa. Prajalpa means mundane talk. So we have discussed that in regard to controlling the tongue. Prajalpa. Niyamagraha. Niyamagraha has two meanings. It means being whimsical in regard to the rules and regulations of bhakti. Not serving Takoji every day, not remembering Gayatri every day. There are some rules and regulations in Bhakti we have to follow. If we don't follow them, we we'll reject them whimsically. Then uh, our Bhakti will be ruined. And then Niyamagra can also mean following everything very strictly, but without thinking, why am I doing this? <laughs> For example, Let's say you have RT every day at exactly 12 o'clock. So it's one minute to 12 and you've got all the paraphernalia ready and it's just about to, you're just about to start and then suddenly you see a great Vaishnava, Shukadev Goswami, shows up at the door. Uh, he's ringing the bell. I have to make the RT at 12 o'clock. He can stand outside. And then you do the art. No, just draw on what you're doing and serve that pure devotee. So to follow things very strictly without understanding what's the purpose and what's the benefit of it. This can also destroy bhakti. Janasanga. Janasanga means the association of worldly minded persons. Just as the association of saints opens the door to liberation from this world. So in the same way, the association of non-devotees opens the door to hell. Hmm? Understand it. Association with non-devotees means associating with them with attachment. Because we cannot live in this world and not from time to time see persons who are not devotees. So if you are walking down the street and you see a non-devotee, don't scream and run away. <laughs> this is not the oh, it's the gate of hell. <laughs> and run for your life. No, not like this. The meaning is that if we have attachment for a worldly minded person, then that will be like a hook which will catch our heart and drag us into the material worldly consciousness and take us down. And conversely, if we associate 
with the Vaishnava, pure devotee, with attachment, that will also be a hook in our heart and it will pull us to Goloka Vrindavan. Shri Guru Charani Rati Ese Uttamagati. Attachment to the lotus feet of Gurudev, oh, that takes us to the supreme destination. So, and conversely to those two examples, if we have to associate with a worldly person, but without attachment, you can be kind, but don't give your heart, your attachment in any way. Like Gurudev used to say, have affection for everyone and attachment to no one. And be kind to everyone, but don't be attached to anyone. Only to Gurudev and Krishna, and pure Vaishnavas. So, if we associate with a pure Vaishnava, but we have no attachment for them, then we're not really associating. And if we're associating with a worldly person and we're not, we don't have attachment for them, we're not associating with them either. So association Sangha does not depend on proximity, it depends on attachment. Uh, because to whom we're attached, that's what we meditate on. If you're attached to Krishna when you chant the holy names, then Krishna will come in your mind. And if you, you, can, you can test what you're attached to, by what's coming in your mind when you're trying to chant the holy name? Hmm? Say, what, am I, what do I have attachments to? Okay. Just sit and chant Hare Krishna. And whatever's coming in your mind other than Krishna, that's where your attachments are. That's because your mind is running there. So, Jana Sangha, the association of worldly minded persons, destroys Bhakti. So, Lolyam. Lolyam means greed. Greed, that means that one is greedy for some mundane achievement. I will be the best Madanga player in the world. I will be the greatest pundit of Sanskrit. I'll have PhD delete. So many, one may be practicing bhakti, but along the way, some greed to get some achievement may take over the heart and you become so focused on that that you become out of balance in your spiritual life and neglect the important and nourishing activities. So being greedy for mundane achievements. For example, Srila Rupa Goswami Pada said, one of the angas of Bharti is don't read many books. Because the knowledge is like an ocean. There's no end to it. So if, for the, for the sake of giving new and new, new explanations, you read a book and then you go, oh, but I don't, there's something in here I wasn't sure about, so I'll read this one and I'll read this one, I'll read this. You read it everywhere and you know many, many, many things in a shallow way. But you don't know one thing deeply. So instead of trying to know many, many books, Try to know Shikshastakam Upadesham Ritamana Shiksha. Those are your practical ones. And then, they're just short poems. Uh, but for books, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Chaitamrita. And then, Algo Swami's commentaries on them. It comes actually to, then it becomes, you know, Bhaktira Samhita Sindhu, Jwani Lamani, the Sandarbas of Jiva Goswami, Gopal Jampu. It becomes quite a few books. But that's, those are all focused on your goal and they're all healthy for you, those we should know. Hmm? And uh, so, for a very serious Vaishnava, to become acquainted and try to understand all of these books, this is a sm small amount. You know, if you have to uh, make a doctorate or something, how many books do you have to read? You pick up any doctorate thesis and then you open the bibliography. The bibliography is like a hundred pages. So how many books I have to read to make this one thing? So we have just one group of books, not so many. But we should try to know them deeply. If you can deeply understand Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Chalavrita, Bhaktira Samhita Sindhu, Ujjwa Nilamani, and the Sandharvas, then everything, perfect. That is perfection. If you can 
all the other Sam Chaitanya Chandra I mentioned before when I was here that Sila Bhakti Stasa Thakur said, if there's a flood, if there's a disaster, mm -hmm. just grab the Gita and the Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Chalamrita. Mm -hmm. But if you cannot hold them, you can let go of the Gita. Mm -hmm. Or in extreme case, you can let go of that, but don't let go of Chaitanya Chalamrita. <laughs> this is the main thing. Because whatever, if, if you have Chaitanya Chalamrita, then everything which is in the other Shastras can be revived again. It's all there. But what is in Chaitanya Charmita, you cannot find it anywhere else. If it is lost, it would be lost forever. So, Janasat Yastaloim Satsadvi Bhakti Vinasati. These are six things that destroy Bhakti. Now, six things that make Bhakti successful. What are they? Utsahan Nishtyat Dharyat. Tatat karma pravartanat sangacharat satubrite sadhvi bhakti prasiddhyati. Your devotional service will become perfect, pure, full of joy if you follow these six things. First, utsahat. Utsaha means enthusiasm. Enthusiasm, utsaha means whatever you do, you do with utsuk and ullas. Utsuk is eagerness. Hmm? You cannot wait to do it. Hmm? You cannot tolerate the passing of time. It must be done. Now. Utsuk. So when there is utsuk, eagerness and ullas, joy. I've got to do it now. Uh, no. Not in a reluctantly, hesitantly, with inhibition, no, joyfully. So when we engage in all activities of devotional service with utsuk, eagerness and ullas, joy, then we have utsaha, enthusiasm. Then, utsaha, nischaya. Nischaya means confidence, certainty. In the past, Many persons walked on this path of bhakti and they realized Krishna, they had the darshan of Krishna. They attained their swarup, their spiritual bodies and entered into the Nikunja Seva of Radha and Krishna. Others have done it, so why not me? I am also a jiva. That person was a jiva, I am also a jiva. So if I will follow, I will do, uh, practice bhakti as those persons in the past have practiced, then the result will come to me also. It's certain. It's only a question of time. So this is nischai. Usan nischai dharya. Dharya means patience. Patience means that if there's some delay, in your progress, if there's some delay in attaining your goal, that your utsaha, your enthusiasm, and your darya, your, sorry, your nishchai, confidence don't go down. Okay? So if the first two don't go down, if there's some delay in attaining your goal, that's called darya patience. Because you'll see a person. They're chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare 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 I've been chanting for one hour and not realizing anything. I've been chanting for two hours till I haven't realized anything. I'm beginning to doubt this process of chanting. <laughs> I'm not so sure. But I'm not going to chant so much tomorrow. Because today I didn't get the result I wanted. So, we see the enthusiasm go, go down and the certainty, the confidence goes down if there's delay in attaining some realization, progress. So, Darya means if there's delay, these things should not go down. And we can say, truly speaking, real Darya, real patience means, oh, if nothing is coming, you become more enthusiastic. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Now I'm two hours closer to go cover down. <laughs> don't, don't see that the glass is half, half empty. See, it's half full. <laughs> see the positive.
positive side. Uh, I, be, I am taking shelter the whole name for two hours, so that's that pro progress is there. Because that those two hours of my life were not wasted; they were spent in Krishna's service. So that's very valuable. I should become more enthusiastic. So Utsali Stadya Tata Karma Pravatana. Tata Karma Pravatana means our bhakti becomes successful if we do all the activities which are required of us. There are rules and regulations in bhakti and there's a devotional life. So we should put on tilak, remember Gayatri Mantras, chant Harinam, Sova Takoji, make RT, Kirtan, study Shastra, be, serve Gurudev, serve Vaishnavas, go on Parakrama, Brajmandal Parakrama, Navadi Parakrama, Jagannath Puri Parakrama. All these important activities of Bhakti, we must observe them. If we don't observe them, then we cannot progress. Then, uh, Sangha Tyaga, this is the reverse of the, of the other verse that said, that a, a bad association destroys our bhakti. So here it said, our bhakti becomes successful when we give up bad association. Srila so Rupa Goswami Pada said, Oh, I would rather be in a cage surrounded by fire or in, a, in the ocean surrounded by sharks and crocodiles than to be in the company of the worldly minded persons who are averse to Krishna. So Sangha Chagat Shatobrite. Shatobrite, here the word Briti means one's means of livelihood. Because a person has to survive in this world somehow or other. So one should have a means of livelihood that follows the example of our previous Acharyas. For example, um, those who are in the renounced order of life. Like Madhavanda Puri. Actually, they can beg. They can beg alms. But Madhavanda Puri even didn't beg alms. He only depended on Krishna. If someone will bring him something, he would take it. Otherwise, not. But those in the renounced order, they can beg alms, offer to Krishna, and take that. They shouldn't do any business. Once there was a, one devotee. And he was staying in the hut and he became renounced. But before he was a businessman. He was a good businessman. And uh, at some point the temple was short of material support, funds. They needed some money. And he said, look, don't worry, don't panic, I can solve this problem. I know how to, we can get the brahmacharis together, they can make soap. I know how to make a very good soap, cheaply and easily. We can mass produce it and sell it. There will be a good profit and we will support the deities. Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshavar said to him, No, you cannot do that. Why? Sangha Chavet, Sato Brite. Rupa Goswami Pahad said, Sato Brite. One has to maintain his life according to his position, according to his ashram. So those who are renounced sannyasis and brahmacharis, they should not do any business. They can beg, they can preach, and whatever comes by Krishna's mercy, they can accept it, otherwise not. Otherwise their bhakti will be ruined. But if someone is a householder, a grihasta, then they can do some uh, work, they can have some employment and do some business. For them, it will not destroy the bhakti as long as it's not an, uh, an over-endeavor, right? Prayas, if it's, they don't over-endeavor in that. So, but if one is a brahmacharya sannyasi, if you do the same thing, his bhakti will be destroyed because he's not following the previous acharya's examples. Once, uh, our Param Gurudev, he was staying in the mud, and they uh, were very poor, they had almost nothing. And news came that his godbrother was coming to visit him. And Param Gurudev was thinking, Oh, I wish I could offer some very nice opulent prasadam 
to my godbrother who was coming. And he was sitting and chanting, and he heard a sound, chink, cha-ching. <laughs> he opened his eyes and saw some cloth on the ground in front of him. A bird had flown over and was carrying some cloth, something in his claws, and he let go and it landed right in front of him. And he opened it, and there were some rupees inside. And then he called the brahmachari, said, I would take this to the marketplace and buy very good ingredients. And then they prepared this very nice prasadam. And, and then his god brother came and he served him. So, Sila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj, he has this experience. My Gurudev used to give this example. That those who depend on Krishna, then Krishna will manage, manage everything in their life. Ananyas chintayantu maam yejana paryapasate trisham nitya viyoktanam yogam shema vam yaham. Krishna said, for those always thinking of me and serving me with devotion, I protect what they have, I maintain what they have, and what they are lacking, I bring it myself. So we should have very strong faith in this. Sagachaka Chatobrite Sadhvi Bhakti Prasidyati If we live our life in this way, then uh, our bhakti will be successful. For householders who are working, and earning some money, this money they should use in Krishna's service. Otherwise, it is uh, Maya. It is not Lakshmi Devi. The God Lakshmi Devi only serves Krishna. So this is Maya Devi coming to distract you. Because if you have money and you don't use it in Krishna's service, then you think, oh, what will I do with this money? Maybe I'll go to a casino. Maybe I'll go to a restaurant. Maybe I'll go to a holiday in Las Vegas or something. The money is always attracting you to do some non-devotional activities. So what money we have, we should try to fully engage it in the service of Guru and Vaishnavas. Then instead of destroying us, uh, then uh, we will become overjoyed. Srila Bhaktisthan Sattako once, he collected so much money. And then he said, go to the marketplace and spend all of this money on flowers. <laughs> so they went, the brahmacharis went and they bought just so many thousands and thousands of flowers. And then they brought them to the temple and decorated the deities and the whole altar. They had Pushpavesh, the deities were dressed, you know, you can dress Radha Krishna in flowers. The whole altar was turned into a kunj of flowers. All the temple was decorated in flowers. And garlands were offered to the Lord and given to all the Vaishnavas. All the flowers were everywhere. And at the end of the day, they all wilted. It was gone. Now someone might think, he had a period, a large amount of money, and now, eight hours later, boom! It's just gone. Huh? But Prabhupada Bhaktisiddha Sotaro was in ecstasy. <laughs> Because when we use Lakshmi in the service of Narayan, we use wealth in the service of Krishna, the heart becomes overjoyed. And not only that, but whatever you use in the service of Krishna, it's not gone, it comes back thousands and thousands of times. So you don't save money by trying to save money. Just spend on Krishna. Spend on Krishna's service, Guru's service, Vaishnava service. And you'll be so happy. And if not, then Krishna said, wealth is like, you should see wealth is like death. Because your mind will go there. Your mind will be thinking about my bank balance. I have so many thousands of dollars, what will I do with it? You will forget Krishna, make offense to the Holy Name and meditating on money. What is the most valuable thing you have? Your time. Because every second, you cannot buy one second back, even with millions of dollars. You cannot buy back one second. Hmm? So that money is stealing your time. You're thinking about it. What will you do with it? Where will you go with it? How will you spend it? And it's stealing your time, which is millions of times more precious than the money itself. Hmm? So do you own the money or is the money owning you? I have to think. So, 
Srila Rupa Swami Pad has uh, described in the Seva Aparats, in the offenses, in service, is to not spend according to your means. Let's say you have enough money to buy a big bunch of roses, but you go out into the garden and pick a dandelion. <laughs> oh, Krishna. Esha Pushpanjali. What is this? If you can afford it, go and buy the flowers. Buy a nice flute, crown, outfits. So, being miserly destroys bhakti. So, Sangataka Chaturvrite, one should maintain himself. Following the example of the previous Acharya, Srila Bhakti Thakur, he was a householder. He had 13 children. He was working, he had a job. But he was also waking up at 1 o'clock every morning, chanting 64 rounds before going to work. And when he got back from work, he would set off and make Kirtan and Harikata program. So, if you are, are Grihasta, follow the example of Srila Bhakti Thakur. If you are in the renounced order, follow the example of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Madhavendra Puri, uh, Rupa Goswami, Sarat Goswami, Srila Bhakti Pragyam, Keshmaj, and so on. Then, next verse of Upadashamrita. Dadati Pratikranati Gyuvam Akati Prachati Bhumte Bhujayate Chaiva Sadvidi Priti Lakshanam. These are six exchanges of preeti, exchanges of affection. It's very important to associate with Vaishnavas affectionately. And this affection is expressed in, in six ways. First, the dati gives something. If that Vaishnava needs something, tilak, no big bag, whatever it is, mainly Vaishnavas don't need anything. But if they want something for preaching, for preaching machine in Krishna's service, try to give. The Dati and Prati Granati accept something also. If a Vaishnava may give you remnant garland, remnant Mahaprasad, or remnant cloth. These things should be uh, treasured. Dadati Pratikarnati Guyam Akiti Prachati means an exchange in the form of confidential conversation. Come before the Vaishnava, open your heart. Guyam Akiti Prachati to ask, to ask a confidential question or reveal one's heart and receive confidential instruction. Like Gurudev used to say, if you have an attachment, you have a bad habit and you hide it. First of all, you cannot hide it because Gurudev knows everything. And secondly, if you try to hide it, it will you know, destroy you. Just like if you have cancer and you try to hide it. No, if you have cancer, go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't... Uh, go to the doctor, then he cannot operate. So in the same way, if we try to hide our faults and defects, like a cancer they will spread, it will become uncontrollable and will be finished. So one should open the heart to the spiritual master. And for the devotee is more advanced and has overcome all bad habits and attachments, then he may uh, open his heart and tell some Inquire about some realization. Some realization is coming, but perhaps not clear. So they can speak that. The, such things should not be spoken here and there. Srila Nathanda Stakro said, Apana bhajana kata na kohi tata. I will not speak about my bhajan here and there to anyone. Now this is connected with the first verse also, Vato Vegam. Because what happens is, if you are chanting one day and some realization comes, and then you go, hey, blah, 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 and then it comes out of your mouth, uh, then more reali that realization
temptation will go away and more will not come. Because, my granddad used to give the example of camphor. If you have camphor, you have to keep it in a box. If you take the lid off the box, the camphor will just evaporate into the air. So you have to keep whatever realization is coming internally at, the, at your sadhan kal, at the time of practicing sadhan. Whatever realization is coming by the mercy of Gurudev, keep a lid on it. That is Vajo Vega. Control the urge to speak. Keep the lid on that. But sometimes, sometimes it may happen that you, in a, in a very private way, to Gurudev or very advanced Vaishnava, may say something to have confirmation or some clarification about that. And that advanced Vaishnava may give you some confidential instruction. We'll be speaking about that in the evening. Confidential instruction. So, Goyam Akita Prichati Bhumte Bo Jayate Jaiva That means you should try to feed a pure Vaishnava and then after they eat and take some remnant. Now, why is Srila Rupa Goswami speaking about six exchanges of love? Because the pure Vaishnava, Mahatmanastu Mamparta Daivin Prakritim Asrita. The Mahatmas, the great souls, are under the shelter of Krishna's Bhakti Shakti, his internal spiritual potency. But the conditioned souls, they are Swarup Shakti Ananugrahit. They have not received that spiritual energy yet. So, not by proximity, but by proximity and attachment, with attachment, with affection, then the Bhakti Shakti, the spiritual energy is transferred from the pure Vaishnava to the conditioned soul and then he becomes a pure Vaishnava also. A mosquito is also sitting on the lap of Gurudev, but he's not doing Sadhu Sangha, he's just drinking his blood. So a disciple should not try to be like a mosquito, coming to Gurudev and only harassing Gurudev with different uh, worldly problems. These worldly problems are not problems. The only problem is not chanting your rounds, not chanting Hare Krishna every day, not doing arti every day, not serving every day, reading every day. This is the problem. So don't think that Gurudev is your garbage disposal, that you'll come all the time with garbage and throw it down. This is not association. That's like a mosquito only drinking blood. So association is with affection, love and affection. And when that affection is there, that attachment is there, then when you are listening to Kirtan and Harikatha, then the Anubhav, the realization in the heart of the pure devotee, will overflow to your heart. It is reflected. Just like if you hold a mirror in front of something, the reflection comes there. So in the same way, when we have affection for a pure Vaishnava, we come before them and we engage in Kirtan and we listen to Harikata. Then their realization of Vrindavan is reflected onto our heart and this is how we Attain realization. Yasya prasada bhagavat prasado, yasya prasada nagati kutomi. Dayam stuvam stasya yasastu sandyam, one day guru sri chana. By the mercy of Gurudev, one gets the mercy of Krishna. Without the mercy of Gurudev, one can have no destination, good destination in life. So dayam stuvam stasya yasastu sandyam, three times a day, morning, noon, and evening, I remember my Guru Mantra and Guru Gayatri and offer prayers. So this is what four verses of Upadesha read. We have discussed this morning. We'll continue in the evening. Sila Rupa Goswami Par Ki Jai Upadesha Amrita Ki Jai Bhuvna Mahakarishi Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai Jai Gaur Premanand